Fenway Studios, this building is, it's very important to a lot of people who live here because it was designed for painting. It has a rich history of painting. Some, some of Boston and America's prominent artists have worked here. This is one of the oldest studio buildings that was built for artists that is still being used by artists in America. It's one of the very few, as I understand it. It originally was a studio building for artists. It's never been anything else. It is the longest continuous studio building in the country. It became a cooperative in the 80s, which saved this building from being abandoned or being converted into something else. I believe it was the first co-op in Massachusetts. And we did that so that no artist actually owns a studio but shares that equal the value of their studio to assure that only serious artists live and work here. Um, some of the more notable artists in the building were Tarbell and, and Gamble, and they're both currently represented in the MFA. I mean, we know that John Singer Sargent would come here. And the history of the building, its physical shape, which is perfect for painting, the steady north light, the shades that come up from the bottom and down from the top, and what I call splash curtains, but all this in control light. It's just a perfect, quiet environment to be an artist. One of the greatest things about this building is the north light. The building was originally built, um, so every studio would have the north light, which was really the preferred light of easel painters. And even though I work abstractly, to be able to work in this light, um, which stays consistent all day long, it's really a privilege. It's really a luxury to have this type of studio space in this location in the city. This building was erected in 1905 at a time which I like to describe as Boston was building temples to high culture. The Museum of Fine Arts, Boston Public Library, Symphony Hall, and two lesser temples to high culture, as I call the Fenway Studios in 1905, and in 1915, the Riverway Studios were also built for us. The Riverway Studios, the building still stands, but unfortunately, they were not able to keep it going for artists, and it's now a library for one of the small colleges here in Boston. The artists in this building feel a real sense of um, responsibility or obligation to maintain this building and leave it as a legacy to artists that will come after us. I think everyone who lives here feels really fortunate to have had this experience. An organization formed about 10 years ago called Friends of Fenway where prominent Bostonians have volunteered their time and expertise and have done fundraising to help us maintain this building. And without Friends of Fenway, we would not exist right now. It's essential that our relationship with Friends of Fenway go on. We've, in the past 10 years, had ma many major capital improvements, including the repointing of the front and back facades and a new roof. And the Friends were crucial in both development and getting a Save Our Treasures grant. Their input, their expertise, their fundraising is essential to keep this building going. For we not only want this to be a building for artists, but we're also trying at the same time to keep the rents in how much it costs to, to, to purchase a studio here as low as possible. Our rents are like half of what they normally are in Boston. The building uh, was originally a workspace for artists, but has over the years evolved where many artists have been able to live here as well. Um, living and working in the same studio space can be really convenient for an artist, and um, living with your work also is great. I've been in many studios in the city that have been converted to commercial space or luxury condominiums, one of the advantages of this studio is the artists own it. And because of that, we know we will always be here. And uh, that's part of the reason why we, why in, back in 79, we bought the building to uh, save this building and keep it for artists. Artists are welcome to apply. We do have a waiting list, and I always encourage artists to get on the waiting list because you just never know when a space might become available. The spaces in the building are really quite unique. They're based on the design of a 19th century French studios where you enter on a balcony and then come downstairs. The high ceilings really, even in the smallest spaces, make you feel like you're in a really large space. This studio is full of objects, as you can see, and most of the, oh, well, a lot of these objects I made as props for paintings. As I'm a traditional painter, so I have to have the object in front of me in this daylit studio. The building is de deemed a National Historic Landmark, which has really protected its status um, here in the city. 
there were certain challenges in maintaining this building as a cooperative, a nonprofit cooperative, that we face. And without the assistance of the Friends of Fenway and the grant writing and development they've done, it would not have been possible for this building to stay as it has. So the Fenway Studios is the last purpose-built artist building in Boston that's still being used for artists. I, in fact, I believe it's the only one in New England. And one, as I said before, one of the few in the country. So our, our endeavor is to keep this building for artists and to keep the cost down as much as possible, which is a challenge in this expensive world. And we live in, in one of the expensive cities.